Have the crypto markets got you down? Hopefully today I will be providing you a glimmer of hope, providing some information about Ethereum and its new hard fork coming out, currently slated for April 8th, called Pectra. So I'll be providing some detail, be providing some history as to what happens normally around these hard forks so that hopefully you can decide whether or not it's time to buy or time to sell Ethereum. I'm Max Voltage, so let's get into it. So, Pectra, have you even heard of it? Did you know that Ethereum has a hard fork, an upgrade right around the corner? It does. And so we're going to talk about what it is, why does it matter, and then most importantly, what is the price action of Ethereum prior or around a hard fork or an upgrade? So let's get started. So what is Pectra going to bring to the table is enhanced scalability. Of course, that's a fancy way of saying that you're going to have more transactions available. So it should lower fees with everything else being equal. And this specifically is being done for layer twos. If you've heard of sharding's out the window, people, layer twos have been adopted and that's the direction that Ethereum's going. There's proto dank sharding. It's not the same thing. In this particular case, enhanced scalability is one of the key features here. And this is just a first step. The next upgrade is already being planned. That's going to have additional steps. Keep increasing that scalability. Also, there's going to be reduced transaction fees against, again, because of this enhanced scalability. There's also going to be improved security as this is like a behind the scenes type of thing. They're always developing to make the underlying technology better and better all the time. But the real key thing that everybody's excited about is the introduction of smart accounts. The Pectra upgrade enables the ability for a wallet to do a lot more different things that it couldn't do before. If you think about how Ethereum transactions were, you say, gee, how much gas do I need? How much extra do I need to apply towards fees? So the bottom line is that this is just flat out gonna make it easier for everyday people to start using Ethereum. Reading straight from this document, regular user accounts which previously could only perform simple transactions can now be temporarily converted into smart accounts. This allows users to execute multiple transactions simultaneously and even pay gas fees with different cryptocurrencies. These improvements make Ethereum easier and cheaper to use while opening new possibilities for future innovations. This opens up the doors for wallets to make it much easier for people to transact in Ethereum. That is the whole intention of this feature. Other key features of this, it also has some improvements for staking, it makes it easier for people to remove their stake. It also allows people who are staking to increase their stake per node. They'll be able to go up to 2,048 Ethereum per node. So they don't have to roll out 64 different nodes of 32 ETH in each node to be able to stake that much. They'll be able to stake larger amounts per node. So this is a very significant upgrade. Depending on what you read, it's anywhere from eight EIPs to 11 EIPs. So again, very significant. All right, let's get to the fun part. I got the dates written down in front of me. So we have a lot of different forks. One that happened, the London, which was EIP 1559, that happened on August 5th, 2021. So if we look at where we were in August 5th of 2021, we were right here. Now, what was EIP 1559? That was a significant reduction 
in the amount of fees that were being paid out by the Ethereum network. So this had a great financial impact, positive impact towards holders of Ethereum because there wasn't the same deflationary factors that were in place while before that EIP 1559. That's the reason I believe why it continued to go up afterwards. But you can see we were at a low point a couple of weeks beforehand. And then 8.5 was when the actual EIP, the actual hard fork took place. And then we continued to climb after that as well. But we did see a significant climb into the EIP. Okay, so the next one was the next significant hard fork. I'm gonna go past a lot of these hard forks that were just pushing out the difficulty bomb. So I'm not gonna talk about those. I'm gonna talk about the significant ones. So the next significant one after that was Bellatrix Paris, which was the merge. And that happened, and as we all know, 9-15-22, the day mining died. Let's go to that date. Now you're gonna see this is much less but you can see right here, 814, if you remember correctly, there was a delay. This was the biggest hard fork Ethereum had ever done. And so they did push it out. Starting in July, that was when we were at a down, when things were down. And then we went up through August 14th, but then there were some delays. So that led to some bad news. But the original date was supposed to be in August and we did climb into that date so again leading into a fork we saw an uptrend now as we go into the next two the next one was 41223 and that was shanghai capella or chapella again that was 412 so let's go to 412 and let's see where we at right there so right at that peak right there is 415 right around I can't exactly get to 412, but 415 is where that peak is. And then it started to consolidate and head down a little bit after it. So this to me looks like a buy on rumor, sell on news. So buy into the hard fork and consolidate afterwards. We're not going to see much activity right afterwards. So if we look to see when that started, a couple weeks beforehand, we're looking at 311, about a month beforehand is when we have a interim low and climbs directly about a month into it. Now let's go to the next one, which is 313.24, and that's Denkun. Cancun and Deneb were the two combined there of the execution layer and consensus layer. They just shortened it to Denkun. So that's 313.24. So let's go to 313.24, which I believe is this peak right there. That's 3.9. It's not going to let me get exactly. Or there's 3.14. So you can see 3.14, 3.9, we're right at that peak. Again, we have a peak exactly at the point when the hard fork is occurring. And if you look, we have an interim low, how long beforehand? Over a month beforehand. That's uh, about two and a half months beforehand. And right now, as of the end of February, we're about a month to a month and a half away from when the actual hard fork is going to occur. Are we at a low? Are we going to follow the same pattern going forward? I don't know. That's for you to decide as to whether or not you think it's a good time to get into Ethereum or not. I'm not a financial advisor. I'm just a guy on the internet pointing out data points. But me personally, I'm, I am thinking about putting more money into Ethereum. What do you think? Do you think Ethereum is going to go up prior to the hard fork? Do you think it's going to keep going up after the hard fork? Let me know what you think. Put it down in the comments. And if you like this kind of content, please hit a like and subscribe and hit the bell icon to see more of this kind of content. Alrighty, guys. Thanks for tuning in. The General is out. Have a good day, everybody.